I'm going to construct a divided surface by creating a new conceptual mass object. Uh, and um, now, you know, my experience is that dealing with points in space uh, it's very easy to get lost in space, to be somewhere in the 3D world and not really quite clear where you are. So I, I tend to uh, draw uh, these three-dimensional surfaces using as much control as I can. So in this case, I want to draw a, a curved surface floating above the flat plane here. Uh, and I'm going to do that and, and give myself a lot of control by drawing it um, with a bunch of grid lines. So I'm going to draw some reference planes to uh, create grid lines here. Um, and um, so uh, grid lines in uh, both dimensions. And, uh, and I'm going to uh, make these grid lines uh, evenly spaced just because I want to really control where they are in three-dimensional space. So that makes it easy to control their uh, X and uh, Y coordinates uh, with the grid. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, basically, now I'm going to draw a bunch of reference points Um, and um, create those reference points. Uh, I'm lazy, so I use the uh, uh, copy tools to do it. Uh, I created those reference points, and now I want to lock each point to these reference lines. So I use my align tool to lock them to the reference lines. This is tedious, but uh, makes it possible to really control where these points are by using the grid lines to control uh, their X, Y location. And then I'll do that with uh, all the rest of the points. So uh, to kind of go through that again, I pick the reference line, I move, uh, align the point, I lock it, And I lock them in the other direction too. Um, so now those points are at the intersection. And just to test that, I can drag this around. Um, well, I left out a step here. I want to make these equal. Uh, but now, now you see how they jump around uh, uh, and they're locked to those points. So uh, now if I click on one of these points, you'll see it has an offset parameter down here. So that's how we're going to define the vertical displacement uh, of the point. Um, now um, I'm going to define those offset parameters. Um, there's no quick and easy way to do it but I'm going to do new parameter. I'm going to make it an instance parameter. I'm going to call it offset uh, A1. Uh, okay, I'll make another one. Offset A2, instance parameter, and so on. Well, now I've made those 16 parameters, and I can go through and start attaching them to my points. So um, I'll tell it OK. Now, if I click on this point, I can go here to this associate family parameter and make that associated with offset one. And I pick this one, 
and I can make it offset A2, and so on. All right, so now I've associated all of the parameters, all of the point offset parameters to a label, a parameter in my type, family types, and so now I can manipulate it. So uh, I'll go to a 3D view and you see my nice grid of points. And if I go here to the um, offsets, I can move them up and down and stuff. So uh, I apply that and number one moved up, or B2 moved up. Uh, I can move it up more just to see what happens. Uh, yeah, Pick a, a different one and move it up and down. Um, so this is A4 and it jumped up. Uh, so, uh, so they're moving properly. I'm not going to test them all. Okay. Uh, now what I'm going to do is, is the next step is to draw reference lines, uh, at these connected to these points. But I want them, you know, I'm a stickler for controlling this as much as possibly can. Uh, I want to um, set my drawing plane to be this plane. And I want then to draw my reference spline through points here. And it's going to snap to each of those points like that. And then I'm going to set my reference plane to be the next one and draw my spline through points through those points and like that. Keep on doing this process, set the reference plane, draw the spline through points, snapping to each of the reference points that I've drawn. At this last one. And notice I'm drawing draw on face. So that all right, so I've got those points. Now, you know, good practice in Revit is always to flex your model, test it, see how it works. Is it working right? And uh, and you see how that A1 point is moving properly and the spline curve is moving with it, it all looks good. So, uh, and we can test that one. There's some just arbitrary points. Seems to be working. And some offsets on these just to uh, and they all move the way we want them to move. All right, now the next step is I can turn this into a uh, surface. So I'm going to pick, you know, control click on each of these edges and create form. And now I've got a surface. Now, once again, we test it to make sure it's working properly. So, uh, so that you see the uh, surface deflects as I change these values. Seems to be working well. Uh, I could test all of them, uh, but uh, okay. So, uh, so that's working. Now the next step is our goal was to make a divided surface. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to divide the surface, and uh, and then I can test it again to make sure it's actually moving. The divided surface is staying attached to the uh, 
to the surface and I can move it around uh, by changing these parameters. And it all seems to work just fine. Now, next kind of question is, will, if I put a curtain panel pattern based on this, will it work? Will it still work? So I'm going to go and uh, open up my, uh, well, I'd already drawn a, a very simple curtain panel pattern base, simple rectangle here, and I'll load it into my new project here uh, into uh, this three by three grid. Uh, and uh, and I'm going to uh, pick my divided surface and reduce the number of uh, panels in it. And then I can place that simple pattern on it. And I got a, uh, a set of uh, surfaces there, solids there. Uh, now, uh, again, I can go and test it, flex the model. That's what we're always doing with Revit. Make sure it's working properly. So this is B2, uh, should be a node back here that I can't see right now. Uh, yep, and it moved it up so I can see it now. B2, uh, let's pull that one down. Uh, get that, so it's all working properly. And uh, so we've, we've got a divided surface with curtain panels, pattern base placed on the divided surface. And in the family editor, it's flexing properly. So I'm gonna load it into the project, project file down here. Uh, that we were looking at in the previous video. And, uh, and I'm going to set my reference plane uh, to, um, I don't want to draw a reference plane. I just want to set a reference plane to be level one. And I can go back to components. And place probably can't see it because it's floating above the plane, but there it is. So um, now to test it, you see all the, all the instance parameters here, and I can go in and change them. And uh, it'll pause after each one, uh, but it won't apply them until I say apply. So I can change a whole bunch of them. Not planning how I change them, I am just putting numbers in arbitrarily. Which is probably not a good idea, but that's what I'm doing. And then I hit apply and it all changed. So, uh, so the surface updated, the divided surface updated, the curtain panel pattern base updated,